Alrighty, everybody, Brando coming at you with another session of crypto here. Now, this is off of breaking news of yesterday. We're going to talk about and dive into the Uniswap issue. What is a security? Let's break it down even further. A security is traditionally a promissory note from a company that gives that sells a promissory note to an investor with an expected return. That being said, the promissory note is usually a note based off an underlying asset, whether that be equity or ownership in a company or debt in a company. Either of those two are financial pieces of paper that represent an underlying asset. The investor buys it expecting a financial return because this is a business transaction. The company is selling an ownership of bonds or equity of the company itself and voting power. Bitcoin is not a promissory asset to investors. Its value will probably go up because it's a good technology, but not not demanding or it's not telling investors that it's going to give it a return. You're not buying Bitcoin to own bonds of a company. You're not buying Bitcoin to own equity in a company. You are buying a utility. We're going to get there. Um, Ethereum, same kind of thing. Okay. The SEC has been confusingly going after crypto and labeling it wrongly, in my opinion, most of the time wrongly, a security. Law, Bitcoin and Ethereum are commodities, like gold, like oil, commodities. They are also public utility tokens for people to participate in an open decentralized blockchain network. That is what they are for. They are not securities. Bitcoin and Ethereum have been saved by being plugged into the CFTC regulations instead of the SEC. The CFTC is the Commodities, Futures, and Trading Commission. They regulate commodities. The SEC goes after what looks like securities or violations of securities laws. Now, where the SEC steps into all of this, their case against Ripple and now their current case against Uniswap and their case against Binance is that if a crypto company, a private crypto company, issues tokens for sale in ownership and voting power of what they own, then yes, it is going to be a security. That's what it is going to be. If what the tokens they're issuing are not only voting power, but let's say it helps the ecosystem run faster by being a tool that you can use on the ecosystem, I don't, that starts to get fuzzy. You don't use stocks for anything other than buying the stock. Maybe you'll use it for collateral, but that's just using it. That's a separate transaction with a bank, right? That's a private agreement. I'm going to use my Apple stock to collateralize a loan. But stocks aren't used in in, in the greater community as a utility per se. So that's where this conversation gets tricky. And the lines get fuzzy as to what really a security is. Now, let's go over Uniswap and what Uniswap is. Uniswap is on Ethereum, okay? Think of Ethereum as the underplumbing of a city. Let's say, you know, Bitcoin's the biggest one. So New York, Bitcoin would be, in this metaphor, New York. So let's say Ethereum is Chicago. Ethereum is the plumbing, the sewers, the electric the grid of Chicago. The Ethereum layer one blockchain is everything underground in Chicago that makes living in Chicago and the buildings on top of Chicago operate the way they do. Now, if you were to imagine the applications built on Ethereum as the buildings in the ecosystem, as the decentralized applications, okay? So if Ethereum is the base infrastructure for the city of Chicago, the Sears Tower and all of their other major skyscrapers in that city are the decentralized applications that are being used by the users, which would be us in the buildings or on the apps, doesn't matter. The individual users are using those apps on the Chicago infrastructure, or we're using the apps on the Ethereum infrastructure on the Ethereum protocol, okay? Apps are buildings, the protocols are are the literal plumbing and electric grid of a city. Uniswap is one of the larger, if not the largest, application on Ethereum. So let's use this metaphor, still go with it and say Uniswap is the Sears Tower, the famous Sears Tower in Chicago. If you don't know it, Google it or picture right here. Uniswap is the Sears Tower. Everybody goes into the Sears Tower to do their business in the Sears Tower. The Sears Tower is offering tokens 
for certain applications. The Sears Tower is not offering tokens to the people in the Sears Tower as a direct investment. They're not saying, oh, buy our security, buy our stock, and, and, and it's going to go up, and we're going to give you a return. No, that's not the promise, okay? That's not the promise. So what does Uniswap do? And we're going to get to exactly what the Uniswap token is for. But what does Uniswap do? Well, if you look at my screen here, we're going to get into it. So swap anywhere, anytime. That's true. You can be anywhere in the world doing anything you want from anywhere, and you can swap any tokens on Ethereum using Uniswap. I use Uniswap every time I want to buy a, a token that's deep into the DeFi landscape. I use Uniswap. Yes, the gas fees are high, but we'll have a whole conversation about Ethereum another day. Okay, guys, let's scroll down here. You can connect your wallet. I use MetaMask, and if you did want to use this platform, you just go to Connect Wallet. You connect your wallet wherever it is. I'd use MetaMask. You go here, and you click Connect. We've, we've shown this before on the channel. And you were to sign in and connect your wallet, and it will go through. So I'll put in my password, and then it will just automatically sync, and your tokens on the Ethereum network will match. Now, Uniswap does offer connections to other networks than ethereum they have branched out to nine other protocol blockchains or nine other cities okay they are connected interconnected through highways now and bridges literally that's the name in the crypto world is bridges they're bridging blockchains they've built highways and bridges from city to city to connect with other tokens which is pretty cool and if you see up here you can go from ethereum you can use arbitrum Optimism, Polygon, Base, BNB Chain, Avalanche, Celo, and Blast. I know Avalanche and Polygon the best out of these. The other ones I'm not so familiar. Bases, Coinbase is layer one, but all of the and BNB Chain, very popular one. We're gonna dive into these more. I need to hire more people in order to become experts in all these chains, and we're gonna get there here at Nova. But you can go through all nine different chains, change the network and get different respective tokens to swap with that, okay? Very cool stuff. This has been a few years in the making. If you scroll down here, you'll go a little bit more into what the Uniswap platform also offers you. It's not just swapping coins for coins. Go direct to DeFi. Web app. You can use the web app like I am now. You can get the app on mobile, and you swap coins. Everybody gets that. Great. Uniswap Wallet you can get a uniquely Uniswap wallet, okay, on iOS or Android. And you can develop on Uniswap. Uniswap is a very decentralized application. You can build trading and you can build trading protocols on Uniswap. If you're a developer, go to Uniswap and you'll have a lot of fun. You got to learn Solidity. You got to learn the blockchain languages, but you can have a lot of fun building applications here on Uniswap. I even dabbled with it a little bit, but to be honest, the uh, computer engineering side of things are over my head. And then you could also provide liquidity on Uniswap. This is the key that makes Uniswap a decentralized exchange. You and me provide the liquidity, okay? And we are the market makers. There is no centralized market maker like um, Citadel or Goldman behind the scenes matching our bids. No. What they're doing, what we are pushing up the capital, and if you want to put your capital not just in a wallet, but actually in the liquidity pools that make all these transactions possible, you can do that. And when your tokens get used for a swap, you get a small yield. Okay, There is a little bit of a distinction here with the liqui providing liquidity. You have something called impermanent loss, which is where if you have – let's say you put – $500 of USDC coin and you put $500 of Ethereum in the liquidity pool. That's great. You're going to make fees on that, but it's most likely going to go one way or the other. In a bearish environment, you're going to sell all of your Ethereum into dollars. And then in a, a bullish environment, all of your dollars will go be going into Ethereum. So you're going to be having a one way or the other type of trade and you'll have to rebalance. Um, it's not the perfect type of yield farming, but with a little bit of care and dedication, you can pull some yield from these liquidity pools. And frankly, that's a strategy that we here at Nova will pursue with our clients down the road as well. Okay. Millions. 
All right, guys. Now, this is platform is trusted by millions. We have over two trillion in all time volume. We have all time swappers of sixteen point six million, of which I am one. All time liquidity pool fees three point four billion transacted in twenty in the last twenty four hours. This is live one point nine billion. Okay, this is a big platform. This would be one of the larger broker houses on the street. Now, the liquidity pool fees, the LP fees. That is the decentralization part of this. $3.4 billion would have gone directly to the company that would have owned Uniswap. Let's say it was Morgan Stanley's E-Trade or Char- Charles Schwab's um, T- Thinkorswim. Okay? That would have gone all of them. And instead, it has been diversified to the people. I don't know how many liquidity pool holders there are. That fact isn't here. But we're going to do some very slightly wrong very basic math so you just start understanding how the centralization works here. We're going to use the 16.6 million swappers. They're not all liquidity pool providers, but let's use this number just to get an idea of how the 3.4 billion has been spread across these millions of accounts. So we're going to do 3.4 billion divided by 16 Point six million. You're looking at about two hundred and four dollars per account received in fees instead of the three point four billion directly going to a corporation. Two hundred and four dollars in all of our pockets. Okay, not bad. I'd like that. I like that a lot. The commissions come us. So this is why Uniswap is really cool. It provides a lot of good resources for you to start getting engaged into the DeFi world. And they are the leaders in the space, I must say. Now, let's get a little deeper into what the purpose of the Uniswap token is. And this is where semantics can come in. And if anybody is a lawyer who specializes in securities law, and especially crypto, I'd love to hear your comments and maybe tweak the things I said that might be wrong, or just push the discussion further. I would love to see that. Now, if you go here, right away, they tell you what the Uniswap token is for. The Uniswap protocol is a public good owned and governed by Uni token holders. Let's read that again. The Uniswap protocol is a public good owned and governed by Uni token holders. The Uni token, Uniswap token enables community ownership and active protocol. Uni holders govern the protocol through on-chain governance process. Okay, so this is a blurring of the lines of the definition of a security. Owned and governed and voting. That sounds like a stock. Stockholders vote and own a part of a company. That's how a stock works. That is a security. This is a public good. This is a truly decentralized application owned by 16.6 million people, and it is a public good. It is not a for-profit corporation offering securities of an underlying asset and promising a return. There is no talk about a return here on this asset. Do you understand this? Just because there's voting like a stock, nowhere here does it say that they are promising ownership of a company with an expected financial return. This is simply a governance token. So I want to own Uniswap tokens to vote on the platform that I use all the time to facilitate trading and income on the platform. The token is not giving me any money. Buying more Uniswap tokens isn't going to give me more profits in trading. It's going to give me voting rights. Okay, If you happen to make profit on trading a Uniswap token because the token has a value that the public deems a certain price, that is its own thing. The company's not, they're not issuing it to you for expected return. You understand the spirit of the law here, the difference, okay? If you happen to make money on the Uniswap token because the market bids it up because they deem it valuable, that's fine. But you're grabbing this token not to get dividends from Uniswap. You're grabbing this token to vote. There are no dividends on Uniswap. The dividends are becoming a liquidity provider. And you're not buying anything with that. You're literally providing liquidity on a platform. That's not a security. And that's not really an investment in the traditional sense anyway. And so that is where the bottom line here I want to get to in this video. You're not – this isn't – 
securities. The the this is a public good being partly used as some securities would, acting in a way like maybe securities do at times, but the spirit and intention of the of what they are doing is completely away from traditional securities markets. This is a non for profit foundation that is issuing tokens to run on a public blockchain, a.k.a. the infrastructure of Chicago, and to Sears Tower is offering utility goods for people in the Sears Tower to help them run the Sears Tower better. They're not issuing bonds or stocks to help build the Sears Tower to make profits off the tenants. That's not what's going on. If that was the case, it would be a security, and I'd, I'd have to give it to them. Okay, Binance could be more of a security, but even then they're trying because they're more of a the, Binance is a for profit company. OK, Binance is a for profit company and they decided later on to create their own chain and integrate their token with that chain. But initially, when they came out with Binance and they came out with the Binance coin in such a way where it could arguably be more of a security. Now. Because of the Binance chain, there's a lot of utility with the Binance coin. But that is the big difference, folks. Binance is a for-profit company. They're not a public platform like Uniswap. Uniswap is the public platform. I can't say it any other way. I'll be blue in the face. I just need to keep repeating it. Public platform, Binance, for-profit. The SEC does not have, in my opinion, jurisdiction of going to these guys, and they're probably going to lose this case. But for right now, they're coming, and that means that more DeFi platforms are probably under risk. So what does this mean for your money, and what does this mean for the market? I think that Uniswap, unfortunately, and I've been talking about Uniswap on this channel for over a year now. I do I do, and did love this coin and was a mine and put the portfolio, but I am going to have to reduce my exposure to it, and I am going to lower my uh, bullish outlook on this token. Unfortunately, the SEC does create a sizable risk off on that asset and it will underperform whether they are wrong or right at the end of the day investors in the current moment and smart money will stay away even ai models will stay away just because of the inherent risk over this system so do i think uniswap is going to go up in the bull market yes i do i think we're going to hit probably close to 50 dollars, maybe touching 100 or in the 80s uh, again, my prospects for this coin are down now with this announcement. So 50 to 80 would be the new decent range, but probably not until well in the 25, not until alt season really kicks in. And this thing is going to underperform. I've reduced my exposure. I'm reducing my client's exposure to this. Um, we've seen this before. Binance coin has significantly underperformed when the SEC went after them. Um, Ripple has continued to significantly underperform with the SEC going after them. Okay, there's precedent for this call in the market. Um, still use Uniswap. Great platform. But I would expose a little bit less in my portfolio to the Uniswap token. And as for the SEC is concerned, they continue to try to fit a square peg in a round hole. He needs to come to the dawn dawning realization that there is something called a cryptocurrency that is in security and that is neither a commodity. It is both. And that is what crypto is. They've been asking all this time as to what crypto is. That's Let's make that the definition. A cryptocurrency is a crossbreed public good and a public utility tool, a commodity, and a security. And when those three things combine, they each use unique aspects of each three asset classes to create a decentralized crypto token. And that's the way it should be in the regulator books. That's all I have to say about that. Otherwise, I'm going to start getting really angry. All right. Take care. Till next time. That being said.